Hi everyone and welcome. I'm out here in my garden and the sun is just starting to peek into the garden and shine down onto the plants and pretty soon it'll be over here where I sometimes tend to my uh, worm trays. So I wanted to get this job done today before it gets very warm. I wanted to talk a little bit about my outdoor worm bag or at least what used to be in my outdoor worm bag. As you can see the outdoor worm bag is right down here on the ground empty at this point. And it's been 10 days now that we went into that system and we emptied out the contents. Part of what came out of that bag was screened. And whatever got caught in the screen, all this large chunk material, as well as the worms, were set aside. And then five days ago, I did a light separation to get all the worms out of that material there. And then I launched off those worms into this fairly small container what I'm treating as sort of a temporary holding pen for these little guys at least for a few weeks and it's been now you know five days since the last time I really checked in on here a couple observations I'm making here is that I've only covered with paper and the material in there is getting a bit dry and it kind of makes me wonder if that's part of the reason I'm seeing a lot of castings or along the edges of the container too I'm hoping that this material hasn't gotten so dry that it's um kind of repelling the worms and making them want to leave and find something more hospitable. I mean, I did poke around in here a little while ago and I did um, encounter a few spots where there were a good number of worms hanging out. So I'm not too worried about too many of them having left. At least I'm just hoping that that's the case. But here and there I'll peel back some of the material that they're inhabiting and I can certainly see a good number of them, but there's clear evidence that they've been roaming the sides of the container here. And it leads me to believe that some of them may have actually left at this point. We put these little guys on the scale before we release them into here. And we did determine that we had about three quarters of a pound of worms in this container. Actually, here's a whole bunch of them together. Maybe this is just what I was missing. I didn't really see that they were jumbled together in one spot. And that could be because of the material becoming a bit overly dry. So I wanted to um, protect this material from further drying and further evaporation. So I'm going to put some sort of um, uh, plastic covering over this to help prevent any further evaporation. I've also got some leaves, some, um, I'm not even sure what vegetable they're from, but there's some basically kitchen scraps, the leaves of some sort of vegetable. Uh, a couple of the leaves even seem like they really started rotting in the bag. <laughs> They've been sitting around for a few days. My mom bought them over a few days ago. And I think giving these little guys some of that stuff would, number one, bring a little bit of moisture into this container. Give them something to eat. And then also some sort of covering would be a good idea. I was even thinking maybe adding to the bedding a little bit. Throwing on a little bit of fresh leaves or something. Building up the uh, space for them to be in. But I think the most important thing is going to be the addition of some sort of plastic covering to lock in what moisture is in there already, as well as whatever moisture is going to go in there with the leaves that I'm going to feed them with today. And then I won't have to worry so much about more um, escapees coming out of this bin because of whatever the case may be that's driving them away, maybe dryness. And then the other thing that occurred when we were emptying the contents of the bag was that we... Uh, you know, like I said earlier, we captured some of this stuff in the screen, which was the worms and the large chunk material. And the, the worms were already separated from the large chunk material and released into here. The other half of the equation was the stuff that did pass through the screen. And that was all the really fine castings. And um, I guess one thing that always concerned me about this place over this shelf or this table is the... Um, it's the fact that worms seem to like exploring the table and they might take a shine to something that's in one of my worm systems and I just don't want to have worms overrunning any of these systems I mean worms did I say worms I meant ants sorry you can see there's definitely um some movement out here on the surface I'm not sure if it's visible or not but there's in addition to some worms squirming around here on the surface i could see some ants cruising around so i've got a glove i was mostly interested in just taking a peek at this system here and i was 
mostly interested in this system kind of being in a foraging mode and letting the worms work down whatever's still left in this as far as small food scraps mixed in with the castings but I figured you know sometimes I do feed systems that are in foraging mode I figured since I've got this big bag of leaves that I was referring to as well as this one jumble of leaves down here on the bottom that are pretty rotted in fact they look liquidy in fact I think there's a pool of liquid in the back, bottom of the bag those might be a different type of leaf maybe those are the leaves of parsley or something I thought that these leaves would hold up pretty good. These are the leaves of some sort of vegetable that seemed like they were holding up pretty good, but I didn't realize there was um, some leaves down here that are just kind of in an advanced stage of decomposition already. So I was going to put the glove on and mount the camera up on my um, tripod and tend to these couple things that I wanted to take care of for these two systems. So let's get to work. All right, so we're going to start in here. I, um, I went in the house and I grabbed this box here and it seems like it's almost a perfect fit across the width here and the lengthwise I just folded the two edges up give it a good tight fit in here I mean there's little tiny gaps here and there around the edges that allow for a bit of airflow but it seems like between this being two layers of cardboard and being a pretty good tight fit around the edges I think it should probably serve quite well in terms of preserving some of the moisture in the system especially if I, after I add some moisture and I'm going to uh, add moisture like I said earlier in the form of some of this veggie stuff here and I guess maybe just a splash using my watering can here so um I just wanted to get this one done first and then we could go probing around that other container which has just been sitting for 10 days and I've not really had a chance to see what's going on in there so it was this side, I guess, where we saw the worms. On this side, I guess it was maybe a little bit drier, and that's maybe why we didn't see any worms on that side. So I just figured, I don't know, I guess whatever I end up putting in here is probably just going to end up sinking right to the bottom and sitting at the bottom, pulled up. But then once it's covered, it should create a little bit of like a, you know, a humid moisture. Um, oops. I don't even know what to refer to it as. But basically, I think the moisture will attempt to evaporate and exit exit the container but they will be unable to or at least for the most part it'll be unable to because of the cardboard covering um plus this original piece of paper that was on top too so i think between the cardboard and the newspaper coverings hopefully it'll help keep a lot of this moisture that i just added in um to the container to stay in the container and you know, not to mention the fact that this too has a bunch of moisture in it as well I guess since what's on the very bottom what is what I was hoping to put into here since it is kind of mush I don't want to have to reach in and try to pull it out so I'm just going to pour everything in there Ugh, it is kind of gross because I didn't even realize that was in there stuff's been sitting around just you know uh, waiting to be used <laughs> um, so yeah there it is that big wad of some sort of other um, leaf that obviously doesn't have the shelf life of this stuff over here my only thought was that it might have a rubber band or something I wonder if it's carrot leaves it's the carrot leaves that always seem to break down very rapidly when they're just you know sitting around at room temperature for a while so you can see a, a bunch of this stuff was already sticking to these these leaves here too so uh we'll chop up a certain amount of this stuff and throw it in here and then we'll leave the rest of it to go into the other container here because even though we didn't have a chance to really look through the other container the one that's got the castings in it I'm fairly certain that there's a good number of worms in there as well um, not to mention the fact that there's a bunch of um, cocoons in there too probably that are going to be translating into a new batch of worms soon as well so even though this uh, this additional pile of leaves that I set aside to put into the other container might not get eaten up right away, I think in time there will be a, a need for it. So I'm just going to be marking both of these containers off as being fed today. And I think they'll both be in pretty good shape, at least for a while. I guess this is the one that I worry about having the greater potential of drying out because, um, because of the way it was just covered with paper for the past few days and uh, I'm glad we're checking in on it too because it would have been unfortunate to come back into this container 
if we'd waited a few more days and it had gotten so dry that all the worms felt the need to, you know, flee. <laughs> so even though we measured three quarters of a pound, and I guess visually we estimated a population of about a thousand worms when we originally loaded this thing up five days ago, I have to assume that because of all these little trails of castings along the edge of the container, there I have to assume that some of the worms that were inhabiting this container have since left so we got food we got moisture we got stuff to cover up with to keep the moisture in i think i'm just going to add a little bit more um leafy material so uh that that should just help build up the overall um uh, bedding content of this container and then we'll cover up and we'll be done with this one so uh, i've just got to run to go get my box of leaves that's in the basement i'll be back in a moment all right, so if you're a regular on my channel, you know that this box is what I keep my uh, leaves in. And they're just simple leaves that I collected in the autumn. Been sitting out here in my yard in a bag. But what differentiates these from the normal leaves that you find in the bag that's right behind the bush next to me is that I run these through the microwave just to make sure there's no little creepy critters living in these leaves before I bring these into the wormery. So it's just sort of a sterilization approach that I've been using and you know I guess since this stuff is all going in here completely dry too perhaps it wouldn't hurt just to splash in a little tiny bit more um, moisture before we start covering things up here this way I think we'll have a nice cozy environment that could probably sit out here for a little while with all that food and moisture and uh, at this point adequate coverings too to help keep the moisture in But, you know, I don't think I need to go overboard. There was a pretty good amount that I had put in earlier on. So I think I can even feel it on the bottom. It's definitely a lot heavier than it was previously. Okay, cool. That's kind of what I was after here today. And I'm glad we did, you know, because like I said earlier, if this had been left any longer, we could have probably seen a lot more evidence of worms exiting the container and then maybe be left with no no worms in the end which would have been pretty unfortunate so there we go instead of plastic coverings now we're covering with um cardboard and i think it'll do just as good a job of keeping the moisture in for the most part especially since we've got so much in there now so all right let's go check out the other container that's got the castings in it so now here i don't worry so much about the moisture because this this cardboard covering which is also two layers is not really holding the moisture in because it's two layers of cardboard it's because the the bottom layer is actually wrapped in plastic so this container for the most part has been covered in plastic clearly it's got some um, good ventilation around the edges and um, even right underneath the plastic there's just this little piece of wood here too so I'm sure air is able to come and go around here as well but you could see right away that the moisture level of this piece of paper on the bottom is fairly um, I mean it's not soaked or anything like that but it is damp and that's pretty pretty good sign you know i think because it just indicates that the the moisture level in here is probably just about right i would have to say and the fact that it's um the fact that it is a little bit damp on the surface once in a while when i peek in here i do notice worms and i thought i saw a couple earlier when we peeked in here worms that were just hanging out right on the surface coming up to take a little advantage of the uh, moisture that was collecting here just kind of cool there's a worm right there so we've not been into this container for the past 10 days and I remember when we last looked at this material as we were dumping it into this bin we did spot worms here and there and it wasn't very hard to find them either so we, we kept bumping into them so besides the assumption that these castings were um, riddled with a bunch of cocoons that fell through the screen just as easily as the the castings themselves did you know we we kept spotting evidence of worms that had also passed through the screen as well so i have to assume that this bin has a good number of worms in it and in a short period of time once the cocoons all begin hatching we'll have even even more and hopefully quite a bit more and this is a um, pretty good heavy containers it's such a huge difference when I picked up that other container that the other worms are in that's kind of light with all that dry material in there. 
and it's a much smaller container too obviously it was like night and day this thing's got to be like 10 times the weight and that's just the nature of castings castings are very heavy so I, I can't really say that this material is terribly damp it's not terribly damp at all but I think as long as we keep it covered the way we've been keeping it covered with the plastic allowing for a little bit of airflow around the edges I think we're going to be able to preserve the majority of the moisture that's within this stuff so hopefully we're not going to um, observe this stuff drying out uh, too rapidly I mean after all we're just wanting to wait a few weeks for whatever cocoons are in here to hatch and then hopefully we can round up those baby worms as well as the adult worms that are in here in here too and then relocate them to rejoin the uh, the worms in the other container since they're all kind of one big happy family that got separated 10 days ago so uh all right i just wanted to kind of rummage through the material and check it all out but yeah i kept seeing clear signs of worms all over the place so uh i think all i'm going to do is i'm going to create a little bit of an opening kind of down the middle kind of the way i normally do when i feed my worm bins and i figured we would just drop these um these leaves that we're giving them as food right down into the middle we won't give them the plastic bag <laughs> but we'll give them the rest of all of this stuff and you know perhaps in the early stages of this the worms that are in here the adult worms will come by to feast on this stuff and i don't know how long it'll last but you know in time the baby worms that emerge will also need some stuff to nibble on and i guess the only thing that comes to mind at this point is possibly being another good useful thing to have in here is maybe grit so even though i didn't come up here and i don't plan to run back down to just grab the grit i mean over time when i was um occasionally feeding the outdoor worm bag i did apply grit to some of the feedings so i have to kind of assume that there probably is some grit mingled in with this food here i mean with these castings that would have also come through the screen and ended up in here so i'm going to have confidence in the fact that if baby worms are already starting to emerge from their cocoons that they've got grit enough in here to suit their needs at least for a while and then um, I guess the next time we check in we'll probably come equipped with a little bit of grit to include with whatever next feeding gets put in here and at some point soon those feedings will probably be intended not just to you know provide sustenance for the inhabitants of the container but it'll be more um, geared towards being bait to try to round up the um, inhabitants so we can get them all out of these castings and then we can really start treating these castings as finished and, um, and then we also feel like we've managed to reclaim the population from the container and keep them in our uh, service <laughs> all right so let's see how did we have this covered i think we had just this piece of paper resting right on the surface picking up some of the moisture that tries to evaporate but catching most of it this is kind of more of like a paperweight in a way almost makes me wonder if we'd be better off not allowing this to be here and allowing for airflow beneath it if we'd be better served with the plastic resting right there on the top of the surface probably capturing a great deal more moisture than um, if this was beneath it allowing for more air gaps and more airflow I'll still use it as a paperweight, but I'll put the dry side down so I don't soil the cardboard. But that's it. I think that's where we stand today with all the contents that came out of the outdoor grow bag that was my outdoor worm bag. The only stuff that we haven't really talked about is the that large chunk material that did get caught in the screen that was inhabiting what that was holding the worms up until five days ago when I um, separated them and put them into the green bin. That stuff, I'm still debating on what to do with it. I did hint at the fact that I might want to use that stuff to relaunch the, wor the outdoor worm bag. And the stuff is still sitting around. I also kind of had the assumption that it might also have a bunch of cocoons in it as well. So I haven't really discarded that stuff, nor have I put it back into service in any sort of a composting bin. The stuff is still just sort of sitting around. And at some point I may do something with that as well. But gradually we're tending to all the little bits and pieces of the stuff that came out of the outdoor grow bag that the worms were in. And um, hopefully we're tending to the needs of everything um, adequately. 
I feel like we are. But if I'm missing anything and you're noticing it, please, by all means, let me know. <laughs> Put a comment in the video. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.